Hey yo, thanks for tuning in to The Source, your source for celebrity news. Check this out. The other day, Beyonce dropped a new photo online to promote her new album, Act 2. And in the photo, she's standing there butt naked like the Statue of Liberty with a Miss Universe sash on with a cigar that has smoke wafting from it that highlights her long braids with beats. Now, after Beyonce dropped that photo, Erica Badu crept into the comment section and she just wrote, hmm, yes people, capital H, little m, little m, little m. Well, after Erica Badu said that, a whole bunch of people thought that she was throwing shade because she was saying that Beyonce stole her stees. And one person came through and said, does she own braids and beats? And then somebody else was like, Rick James, Stevie Wonder. I mean, let's be real here. And then after that, somebody named Black Beauty Bag came through and said, we've been doing this hairstyle for millennia in Africa. From Egypt to Senegal, Mali and many other countries in the motherland. This hairstyle came back in the fashion in the 80s. And even today, all over the world, many black women do this hairstyle. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, a whole lot of other members of the Beehive just thought that Erica Badu was trying to start with Beyonce for no reason. And one person even went so far as to say, another case of someone trying to be relevant by using Beyonce as bait. And then, somebody else came through and said, she always coming out of nowhere starting with Beyonce though. It gives I want to pick a fight with Beyonce so bad. Hmm. And then, somebody else came through and said, they swarming. Alright, so after the Beehive got their swarm on, Erica Badu came back to the mic, which is social media, but this time she addressed Jay-Z, and she said to Jay-Z, say something Jay, you gonna let this woman and these bees do this to me? <laughs> and then she posted the following clip. And I might hate you for the rest of my life, for real, because you knew, you knew, I, and I might <laughs> Now, after Erica Badu posted that, somebody came in the comment section and was like, she's clearly trolling. And then somebody else was like, I don't care. Auntie Erica is hilarious. And then after that, somebody else came through and said, it annoys me when people take Erica too serious. This is her form of affection. You'd have to be a fan from the beginning to truly understand. I can't explain it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Erica Badu is not beefing with Beyonce. Erica Badu sitting at home in a really big hat, smoking a blunt with some incense burning while she's turning out some new dude. And she's clearly just playing around on the internet. And on top of that, Erica Badu does not need a history lesson from some tweeny boppers telling her where the African braided hairstyle came from. Trust me, she knows. We all sat down between our mother's legs and sat there for like six, seven, eight hours while she put all them braids in her hair with all of them heavy beads and then she sent us off to elementary school clicking and clacking on the cheese bus. And every time we turned our heads, we were sounding like this. <laughs> Trust me, Erica Badu knows the origin of the hairstyle. She knows that she doesn't own nasties and she's simply on the internet playing around and most likely there's also an inside joke between her bae and Jay. I mean, come on people, it's almost like we forgot how to have fun. Now, check this out. The other day, Meek Mills jumped on the internet and he said that he's willing to give the city of Philadelphia 10% of all the earnings that he gets from rap to help the city combat gun violence. Meek said, I'm going to do a public contract with the city of Philadelphia where 10% of my music earnings go to the city of Philadelphia to combat gun violence in our city. I'm going to start this movement. Pip Fat G's. I want to do a contract with the city of Philadelphia. Now, as soon as Meek said that out of his mouth, DJ Academics jumped online and he fired back. And Academics was like, rap about gun violence to increase violence in the inner cities by 400%, then pledge a measly 10% of your earnings from said rapping to combat the same violence that your music just promoted. Wow, this guy's a saint. Listen, I like the premise of what Meek is saying, but I also agree with academics because donating 10% of your income to combat gun violence after you done amped up a bunch of kids to go out and do some gun violence because of your lyrics doesn't quite add up. 
I mean, that's like a fast food restaurant donating 10% of its income to combat obesity, which doesn't work because you can't continue to be part of the problem and try to be part of the solution at the same time. So I think that Meek Mills needs to take the pledge one step further. And in addition to like pledging 10% of his income, he also needs to make a pledge to clean up those lyrics. I think the problem is that a lot of these new rappers don't understand that you can still keep it real and keep it street without rapping about violence, explicit sexuality, and like money. I mean, A Tribe Called Quest gave us Bonita Apple Bum classic, not overly sexual. Slick Rick gave us a children's story. He was talking about the street, but he finessed it. Missy Elliott told us to go out and get our freak on without using a P word not once. And Eric B and Rakim told us that they were paid in full without glorifying pimping or selling drugs. What I'm saying is, rap is an art form, and our art form cannot be limited to only like sexuality, money, and violence. We gotta bring the creativity back. I mean, for real, I need a whole new generation of Bismarckies, Nice and Smooths, A Tribe Called Quests, De La Souls, and even LL Cool J's to give me something to play in the booming system, cause the music today is way too dark. I mean, we went from ain't no half stepping to like now, I'ma shoot you as soon as I see you. I mean, we really need to get back to six minutes, six minutes, six minutes, Dougie Fresh, you're on. Cause I'm telling you, when we get to the point where we're playing sexy red ski yee at the White House, we have gone way too far. Oh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, let me tell you something, times have definitely changed. This is different around here. It ain't what it used to be. Uh, Kamala Harris invited some HBCU students to the White House. And the DJ, they had a DJ, play Ski by Sexy Red. And the students just, all the HBCU students just had a good old time. <sighs> Y'all couldn't have found nothing. Look, did you know what's crazy about this? I mean, I ain't got nothing against Sex Red, you know, other than the obvious. You know what I mean? She's not exactly a positive role model uh, for, for young ladies at all. You know what I mean? You talking about you, you playing, damn it, Kamala, and damn it, them students. What is, what's going on? Sex Red got lip gloss named gonorrhea and all other kind of sexual things. That she's named different lip glosses behind You know what I'm saying Just the raw dog queen And this who you decided to play At the damn White House Who even told you to have a DJ What, what is all this what is, what is going on This got to be It's just worse Just worse Like we, we slid down so, And don't get me wrong Ratchet music has been around since music period I get all of that, but y'all don't see it's a play. They don't see it. I don't know. Do what you want to do. I'm just saying, like, you know what I mean. I, I, it's certain. It's a time and place for everything. That's why. That's all I'm saying. If I'm coming to the White House. You understand? You know, it's certain things I'm gonna do around my friends and family. I just ain't, I ain't gonna do around y'all. You know what I'm saying? If I'm at a cookout and you play, you know, Uncle Luke or back that ass up, me and my wife getting ready to dance. We finna have a good time. Yes, that's what we're going But if I'm at the White House, I don't want nobody looking at me. We're not doing, we're not here for that. Turn that damn music off. There's a time and place for everything, Kamala. You understand? That's just like church. Do you remember when you pull into the church parking lot, you turn certain music off? Same play, same thing. We lost. I'm telling you. Lost as hell. <laughs> Listen, I agree 100% with the Shula King, but let me know what you think. Do you think the sexy red is appropriate for the White House? Or do you think Kamala and them done took it too far? Let me know in the comments. And while you're down there leaving a comment, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Now, check.
check this out. The Bobs are coming for Ice Spice. After Kanye West revealed that Ice Spice was willing to drop a verse on his new album, Vultures, to fill the void that was left on the track called New Body, after Nicki Minaj refused to give Kanye West clearance to use the bars that she originally dropped on the track first. When discussing why she refused to give Ye permission to use her bars, Nicki Minaj simply said, that train done left the building. Well, now that the Bobs have found out that Ice Spice was more than willing to slide into Nicki's spot and she even sent Kanye a verse to replace Nicki's, they're not pleased. Because Kanye jumped online and blew up Ice Spice's spot when he said Ice Spice sent a verse in for New Body. Now, her team is saying we can't use it. Well, after the Bobs heard that, they went ham on Ice Spice. And one person said, I hate that Ice Spice has shown her hand. Going against the queen will be the demise of her career. You don't get into the game and make a move like that. It's not about being scared. It's about being loyal to the ones that are loyal to you. This is why Nikki is the way she is. And then somebody else said, how they sisters? When she sent the verse in and now snatching it after it was leaked that she was sent the song. Now, not everybody was anti Ice Spice because one person came through in the comment section and was like, hashtag Ice Jaw is not the blame for not having a verse. At Nicki Minaj herself declined new body publicly and multiple times. Listen, I'm not a fan of Ice Spice, but I'm going to stand with Ice Spice on this one because if Nicki Minaj refused to give Kanye permission to use her verse and she said that the train has left the building, then she can't get upset and the Bobs can't get upset when somebody else decides to stand on that platform and catch that train. And I mean, as a new rapper, if Kanye calls you and asks you to drop a verse, you drop the verse. You don't turn around like, I can't because I'm loyal to Nicki Minaj. Who are you kidding? Just because Ice Spice did the song Princess Diana with Nicki Minaj does not mean that she needs to have like undying, unwavering loyalty to the woman for the rest of her life. She has to look out after her own career. So as far as I'm concerned, what Ice Spice did is not grimy. But what is grimy is the chick who called the Uber knowing darn well that her boyfriend was pow powing at her. Check this out. Diamond? Yeah. Go, go, go. You finna shoot up the car. Shoot up the car? Yeah, go. What the fuck? What is go, that? Go. What the fuck is that? What the fuck was that? He just shot at the car. For what? Let me call the police. Man, fuck this shit. Let me call the police, tell you. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I'm just over here shaking my head. How's she gonna put that innocent man in harm's way like that? That right there is crazy. And my man was like, what the cuff is that? <laughs> Look, real talk, if I was that Uber driver, I'd have dropped her black behind off right around the corner and been like, look sis, you gonna have to make a run for it cause you ain't fin to get me caught up in your ish. <laughs> and I guarantee you, when this chick finally got out the car, she probably didn't even give this dude a tip. <laughs> Look, people, you cannot be putting your Uber driver's lives in danger like that. Hashtag Uber and Lyft driver's lives matter. <laughs> Listen, let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think that it was okay for this chick to call an Uber driver when she knew that her boyfriend was pow powing at her? And if you were that Uber driver, what would you do? Would you drive that chick all the way to her final destination? Let me know in the comments. Now, peep this. The other day, Ray J was on The Breakfast Club, and while he was there talking to Charlamagne the God, Jess Hilarious, and DJ Envy, he started talking about how big a potential tour with Brandy and Monica would be. And he also discussed his vision for that tour. Are you uh, really pushing for Brandy so and Monica to go on tour together? That's all I want. Really? That's all I want. Why? I mean, like, what, what made you wake up the one day and say, I want this is what I need? Well, I've been saying it since the since they did the uh, verses. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. I got the jet for B. We got, we flew out there. It was this vibe. They were going back and forth. It wasn't like a competition, but it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Brandy, like, her side, we was, I was, it was like, 
a mosh pit for in a ballot. It like was it was a ballot plan, and you look to the side, and we giving her all that support. And I just think Brandy and Monica is an undeniable tour, mm-hmm. right? It, it's like you you both win, last run, like no matter what you feel or whatever. Like how can you not? Mm-hmm. Take that opportunity. Yeah, I love why, that. If you know it's there, why do anything else first? Yeah. And the last song of the tour, Boys Mind. Close mm, it out. God bless that'd tonight. Be crazy. That's dope. So I told him, like, I think that's a that's a hundred million dollar. Both of them, I think they can bring in a two. Who, who opens up that show though? Huh? Who opens that show? I mean, of course, Monica would have to open it, right? Now, after Ray J threw that idea out there on The Breakfast Club, Monica jumped on social media and wrote, I've been repeatedly contacted about interviews, etc., where my name and tour possibilities are being discussed. I've not received any contracts or calls about said tour. Ray J, I'm kindly asking you to stop speaking on me in public. A private conversation would be both necessary and respectful. Brandy is a legend. She's one of one with an extensive catalog that I deeply respect and a voice sent from heaven. The conversation being had without she and I is beginning to muddy the waters severely. She and I are both consummate professionals that share a massive recording as well as an entire era. Please allow this to remain positive and beautiful. Neither should open. We should give someone else the opportunity and co-headline a massive shared stage if this is to ever happen. Any further convo should be private. Now, after Monica said that, a whole bunch of people came in the comment section to defend Ray J because they were like, yo, why she got such a stick up her ASS? And one person said, girl, bye. If you don't like Brandy, just say that. I'm so sick of her passive rude attitude. First off, if you don't want to do a tour, that's understandable, but it's the reasoning behind it. I feel she's not keeping it 100 now. I love Monica down, but what's the point of being nasty with Ray J? That man loves music. He probably really wants to see it for the culture and the fans. Stop mentioning me is crazy. That man ain't say nothing disrespectful of Monica or about Monica. So don't make it like all this Brandy is a legend. Yes, she is. And she's going sore with or without doing a tour with her. I mean, it's the attitude for me. And then somebody else came through and said, she's doing too much. That's his sister. And he's not just having a convo about you alone. He's talking about them collaboratively. Nothing about him speaking his mind is out of place. That's his blood. He's literally just giving his opinion that he thinks it would be dope, which it would be. People be doing too much. Sis, you ain't that important. Calm down. You should be glad somebody is still mentioning your name in rooms that you aren't even in. Next. All right. So after that, Monica entered back into the chat and she said, I get it. I'll forever be the bad guy in this situation and no one will ever pay attention or read slash listen to understand. I have no issues with anyone, but it's not real unless there's a deal. There's no 100 mil, no contract, media outlets calling for comments about an imaginary tour, and this unfairly spikes the excitement of our supporters and the insinuation that the holdup of said imaginary deal taking place is me. The Breakfast Club interview is the first I've acknowledged of the antics. We both deserve the respect of real business being done. Okay, so after Monica said that, opinions started to sway and people understood what she was saying with regard to Ray J. And one person said, she has every right to correct a misleading narrative. Not to mention him saying that she's the opener is wild as F. And then somebody else came through and said, where is she wrong? 100%, I'm nowhere near anywhere near Monica's status. But I do not like someone using my name in affiliation with something in which I have no paperwork or money regarding. And then after that, somebody else added, y'all really need to leave Monica the F alone. That lady don't be bothering anybody until people come for her. Listen, I can actually see both sides of this coin because Ray J's just doing what Ray J does. He's trying to make some more money for the Norwood family. But at the same time, Monica's like, listen, dude, let me handle my own business. I woke up today doing my own thing, minding my business. And all of a sudden now I'm getting all these phone calls about some concert that's actually not taking place. You're making more headaches for me, Ray J. You're making more headaches. (laughs) 
<laughs> Listen, let me know who you think is right and who's wrong in this situation between Ray J and Monica. And also, let me know what you think about Erica Badu giving Beyonce the hmm, Meek Mill saying that he wants to give 10% of his income to combat gun violence in Philly, DJ Academic saying that Meek Mills is full of SHIT because he's part of the problem, Ice Spice being more than willing to replace Nicki Minaj on a Kanye track, and the chick who called the Uber driver and put that driver into the line of fire. Let me know what you think about all of that in the comments. And while you're down there leaving a comment, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Hey yo, thanks for tuning in to Celeb Source, your source for celebrity news. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Peace.